Mahali and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. Let's get started with today's market close commentary. The Australian share market closed higher with marginal gains today as caution prevailed in the market ahead of US Federal Reserve's monetary policy statement scheduled for tonight. The market paired early gains as gains in oil, banks, utilities and telecom stocks were offset by losses in miners and IT shares. The ASX 200 settled 6.70 points higher at 7,386.20, pairing most of the early gains. During the day's trade, the benchmark crossed the 7,400 index and we'll be back in a short moment. The market takes the weekend off, but your money won't. Get a comprehensive update on the ASX listed stocks and market trends. Watch the experts touch upon the fundamental and technical developments and trending strategies in the equity space. We will be your daily guide as you explore the Australian share market, be it global vaccine developments or China's trade relations or global political turmoil or economic revival prospects. We will bring you live updates driving the equity market trends. Kalkine TV. Shields here for Calcone Media. Welcome back to the last show of the day, the last trade. Let's get back to the market updates. The market breadth indicating the overall strength of the market is strong, with 8 of 11 sectors ending in green. The energy sector gained the most, rising 1.43%, while the other sectors that closed higher include utilities, healthcare, financial, A REIT consumer discretionary consumer staples and telecommunication services. Bucking the trend, materials was the worst performing sector and closed 1.56% lower, followed by losses in information technology which also fell 0.7%. Australia's buy now, pay later stocks were under stress as investors remain weary ahead of the outcome of the Federal Reserve's latest policy meeting. The sector's lead players, including Afterpay, Zipco and Sezzel Incorporated, closed in red. The gold stocks traded lower and also ended lower on Wednesday, owing to a fall in the gold price, as trades sold the yellow metal ahead of the Fed's meeting. The major gold miners such as Northern Star, Newcrest Mining, De Grey Mining, Evolution Mining and Romelius closed lower as well. The Australian Energy Index Axi J rose 1.5% to extend its gains into a third consecutive session as oil prices rose overnight to their highest in more than two years. Oil prices rose nearly 2% to their highest in more than two years overnight, buoyed by hopes that demand will recover rapidly in the second half of this year. Sector heavyweight Woodside Petroleum, Oil Surge and Santos ended higher with decent gains. And moving on to the top five gainers and losers. Australia-based property group Ingenia Communities Group was the top percentage gainer on the ASX, closing 3.3% higher. Some of the other notable gainers are ProMedicus, Washington Age, Sol Patterson & Company, Costa Group Holdings and Seek. Mining firm Oz Minerals Limited emerged as the top percentage loser on the ASX, closing lower by 7%. Some of the other worst performers were Newix, Austal, Clinuvel Pharmaceuticals and Nickel Mines Limited, falling between 4.3% and 5.8%. And now let's have a look at some shares that are in the news today. Shares of Gold Explorer Resources and Energy Group Limited rose as much as 16.7% 
to 3.5 Australian cents, their highest since the 19th of May, on approval for a mine revival. The company informed the exchange that its proposal to resume mining at the Granny Venn deposit in WA has been approved by the regulatory authority. It added that the operations are likely to commence in late June. Shares of Oz Minerals Limited dropped as much as 6.77% to $23.83, hitting their biggest single-day fall since the 27th of January, weighed down by a drop in metal price. Copper prices touched a nearly seven-week tough on Tuesday as traders and funds cut bets on higher prices over China price action worries. Stock is a top, top decliner in the Australian benchmark index, AXJO. And the share price of oil and gas explorer firm Caroon Energy Limited's share rose as much as 2.95% to $1.39 on getting a nod for development plans for the Brazilian fields. The company stated it has received approval of integrated development plans for Neon and Goiá fields in the offshore Brazil from the country's National Agency of Petroleum, Natural Gas and Biofuels. Shares of copper and gold explorer Petrotherm Limited gained as much as 42.9% to 0.1 cents after it acquired an iron oxide copper gold project near Wimira in South Australia. Well, on that note, let's take a small break. Stay tuned and I'll be back in just a moment. New Zealand is unique and Kalkine TV is here to bring you all the latest news and trending market updates. Streaming across multiple platforms, so no matter where you are, whether it be at the beach or on the farm, you can count on the team here at Kalkine TV to be your home for accessing the latest valuable insights into global issues that are affecting New Zealanders. Subscribe to our channels across YouTube, Facebook, also visit kalkine.co.nz. by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Calkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Calkine. The market takes the weekend off, but your money won't. Get a comprehensive update on the ASX listed stocks and market trends. Watch the experts touch upon the fundamental and technical developments and trending strategies in the equity space. We will be your daily guide as you explore the Australian share market, be it global vaccine developments or China's trade relations or global political turmoil or economic revival prospects. We will bring you live updates driving the equity market trends. Calkine TV. Welcome back. I'm Holly and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. Let's have a look at some more shares that were trending today. All Resources Limited announced today it has received firm commitments for a share placement to raise up to $2.3 million and a share price of 1.3 cents per share. The generated funds will be used to continue 
to advance was core projects led by the Crown PGE Nickel Copper Project in the Julema District in, in WA. The other projects that will be benefited include Douglas Canyon Gold Project and Nevada and Gobletar Koalin Haleoside Project in South Australia. Grooming products maker Shaver Shop Group's shares fell as much as 13.8 percent to 94 Australian cents. The shares declined after the company predicted fiscal 2021 profits between 16.8 and 17.5 million dollars. The company reported a profit of 14.2 in the first half. Shares of aerial mapping company Aerometrics Limited fell as much as 4.2 percent to 8 Australian cents on tepid earning forecasts. The company expects full year normalized EBITDA earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization to be between 2.75 million and 3.5, lower than 4.6 reported a year ago. It expects revenue in the range of 19 million to 21 million as compared with 20.9 million posted a year ago. Austin Limited shares fell as much as 5.2%, extending losses for a second session. On Tuesday, Austin lowered EBIT and revenue guidance for this year, citing COVID-19 disruptions as well as a provision for a civil lawsuit which it is facing. Therapeutic antibody development company Paintress Limited has announced the publication of a new preclinical data for its DOZMAP antibody PATDX1. As per the announcement, this data from studies conducted in three different animal models shows the unique ability of Patras PATDX1 antibody to cross the blood brain barrier, or BBB and significantly inhibit the growth of primary and secondary cancers in the brain. Shares of Regal Investment Fund gained up to 0.9% to a record high of $5.08 on an action letter from Australian Securities and Investments Commission. The investment firm stated that regulatory body ASIC will not be taking any enforcement action against the company under an investigation. The company mentioned that it has received a no-action letter from ASIC on an investigation related to trading. And Firefinch Limited has gained as much as 25.3% to hit a record high of 57 Australian cents on a deal with China's Gang Feng to develop a lithium project. The lithium miner stated it has signed a binding deal with Chinese lithium mining giant Gangfeng Lithium to jointly develop the Gulamina project in Mali. Under the deal, Gangfeng will be making cash investments of 130 million Australian in exchange for a 50% stake in JV, which will hold Firefinch's interest in Gulamina. FFX says the infusion is expected to fund Gulamina into production. And OrthoCell stated on Wednesday it has secured patents for CellGrow, a salterless repair of soft tissue defects in China and New Zealand. This is in addition to previously granted patents in Australia and Japan. The company has filed further applications for patents in the US and the EU. Well, on that note, it is time for a small break, but let's stay tuned and I'll be back in just a moment. New Zealand is unique and Kaukai TV is here to bring you all the latest news and trending market updates. Streaming across multiple platforms, so no matter where you are, whether it be at the beach or on the farm, you can count on the team here at Kalkine TV to be your home for accessing the latest valuable insights into global issues that are affecting New Zealanders. Subscribe to our channels across YouTube, Facebook, also visit kalkine.co.nz.
Hi and welcome back. I am Holly and you're watching The Last Trade. Let's look at some of the shares that were trending today. North Starwell Minerals Limited announced that two of its exploration lease requests have been approved by Earth Resources Victoria. This has increased NSM's total tenure position by 49 kilometers, increasing its total granted tenure from 552.9 kilometers to 601.9. As per the company, the new dwellings are sizable and contain large-scale intrusive granites and diorites. It has the potential for intrusive-related gold mineralization. Thus, NSM will continue to assist prioritizing regional gold targets planned to be drill-tested in the second half of this year. And Archer Exploration Limited shared that it will be collaborating with the Australian Missile Corporation to support Australia's sovereign guided weapons enterprise. As per the announcement, Archer will work with AMC to identify opportunities to contribute to the Commonwealth Government's new sovereign guided weapons enterprise to support missile and guided weapons manufacturing in Australia. And now moving on to the Asian markets. The Asian markets are trading mostly tracking weak cues from Wall Street, with investors turning jittery ahead of U.S. Federal Reserve meeting outcomes. Investors look forward to the U.S. to the U.S. summit. Sorry. To the U.S. Federal Reserve meetings outcomes. Investors look forward to the meeting and some signal about any change to the monetary policy outlook. Looming data dump on the Chinese retail sales and industrial production also weighed on the market sentiment. And China's Shanghai Composite emerged as the worst performer in the region, falling nearly 0.8%. It was followed by the Straits Times Index in Singapore, which fell 0.7%. Meanwhile, Japan, Japan's Nikkei 225 fell 0.4%, after the country's exports failed to meet the market expectations. Japan's exports in May rose 49.6% from a year earlier. The rise in exports was 1.7% lower than a 51.3% increase expected by economists and markets. Hong Kong's Hang Seng fell 0.23%, while Taiwan's weighted index dropped 0.05%, and the Jakarta Composite declined by 0.02%. Meanwhile, U.S. stocks ended lower in the overnight trade. The S&P 500 slipped 20 BPS from its closing peak to 4,246.59. While the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.27%, the S&P 500 lost 0.20%. And the Nasdaq dipped 0.71%. And now let's have a look at this interesting news from the US market. In the overnight trade, Coca Cola lost $4 billion worth of market capitalization after football legend Cristiano Ronaldo removed Coca Cola bottles at a Euro press conference on Monday. The removal of Coca-Cola bottles had a negative impact on the brand. While speaking at a press conference ahead of Portugal's game against Hungary, the 36-year-old removed two Coca-Cola bottles from view and said that people should drink water instead. The gesture coincided with a significant impact on Coca-Cola's market value. Responding to Ronaldo's comments, the world's largest beverage maker said everyone is entitled to their drink preferences and that everyone has different tastes and needs. Players are offered water alongside Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar on arrival at our press conferences, a spokesperson added. Well, on that note, let's take a small break, but stay tuned as we'll be back in just a moment. The market takes the weekend off, but your money won't. 
Get a comprehensive update on the ASX listed stocks and market trends. Watch the experts touch upon the fundamental and technical developments and trending strategies in the equity space. We will be your daily guide as you explore the Australian share market, be it global vaccine developments or China's trade relations or global political turmoil or economic revival prospects. We will bring you live updates driving the equity market trends. Calkine TV. Hello and welcome back. Holly here and you're watching Calcoin TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. Let's have a look at this latest piece of news coming in from the 41 female CEOs among the Fortune 500, which include two women of color for the first time. Well, the European Union, NASDAQ and even the state government of California all of mandates in place requiring a compulsory percentage of board members to be women or from a diversified group of individuals. Some progress is being made to achieve gender parity of females with their male counterparts in the workforce. With this year's Fortune 500, a list of companies showing 41 women CEOs, making the list even with two being women of color. This is a marked change from the previous years. Karen Lynch, CEO of powerhouse health industry firm CVS Health, is the highest ranked female. CVS Health has a monolithic market capitalization of $268 billion and is ranked the Fortune 500's fourth highest company. This is a record-breaking ranking, taking over Mary Barra, the CEO of General Motors. In 2014, was the largest Fortune 500's sixth highest ranking company. However, General Motors comes in at 22 on the list this year. 2021's list is not just comprising of two women of color in the highest rank ranking of the company, but has a woman as the CEO of a major American bank. Jane Fraser, the CEO of Citigroup, is making history appearing on the Fortune 500 list at the helm of the global banking major. Ursula Burns, the former CEO of Xerox, was the first woman of color to make the Fortune 500 list as a female CEO. However, this list shows two female CEOs of African-American descent a welcomed increase. The USA has seen a slow progress in the engaging of racially diverse employees holding company board positions and CEO positions, and the existing progress seems to be on the basis of voluntary compliance. With only Ross Brewer from Walgreens, Boots Alliance, and the Sunda Brown Ducket from TIAA being the only two African-American females in the CEO position at Fortune 500 companies, many are considering that mandated diversity targets could present a real solution to achieving a fairer representation of community and management positions in the Western world. Well, that is all for now in the last trade with our existing operations in Australia, New Zealand, the UK and Canada. Calkind Media has launched its operations in the US as well. Every day on our first show, The Global Market Updates, you can catch the latest and most important news from the US and UK markets from the overnight happenings. So on that note, I'll see you tomorrow at 10.30am live from Sydney.